I'm Freddie, and I'm excited to tell you about our work on automating the discovery of censorship evasion in the application layer. And so as was just mentioned, this is a collaboration uh, with Michael Harity, Kevin Bach, and our advisor, Dave Levin. So censorship is a pernicious threat against free and open communication online. And this work specifically focuses on in-network censorship. And so what that looks like is we have a client and we have a server. And the sensor is going to be a middle box somewhere between the two. The client's going to send out the request to contact the uh, forbidden resource, in this case, Wikipedia. The sensor is going to see, hey, this instance of Chrome is trying to contact Wikipedia and block the connection. This can mean inserting reset packets or sending the client an HTTP block page. In the case of DNS censorship, it can mean sending back a lemon DNS response, so a DNS response with an invalid IP. Unfortunately, this is in place in countries around the world, China, Kazakhstan, India, Russia, Iran, Egypt, and many more. The good news is there's been a recent thread of research concerned with automating the process of finding censorship evasion strategies. And these are Geneva, Alembic, and SIMTCP. An evasion strategy is some way of altering a packet such that when you send it over the wire, the sensor won't trigger. It either will throw up its hands and not know what to do with it, or it will think the request is totally benign. And the end server will interact with this packet normally, and censorship is evaded. So this is really great. These, are all these aren't just methods of, these aren't just one-off methods for ways to manipulate packets to evade censorship. These are ways to automatically find censorship evasion strategies. And they found over 100 strategies and have, they've been enormously successful, but there are, of course, room for improvement. One of those is that they, all three of these specifically manipulate the TCP and IP headers. This raises challenge for challenges for deployment, since plenty of applications don't want to ask users for root-level privileges. Uh, mobile phone, and mobile phones, it's really hard to get root privileges. It's really hard to manipulate these TCP IP headers. So barrier for deployment there. Number two, we just heard about DNS. DNS over UDP, when it comes to that protocol, we don't have the uh, processes for autom automatically finding strategies to find, oh, my bad. We don't, have, we don't have techniques to automatically find strategies in this space because it runs on UDP. So the idea is if we bring work to the application layer, if we bring this existing work to the application layer, we won't need heightened permissions to execute them. Applications can manipulate their own applications application data stream, so no problem there. And two, focusing on the application layer means we can automatically find DNS strategies. Fantastic. To achieve this, we're going to expand upon Geneva. In essence, we need to fuzz in the application layer. There's a subtlety here, because most fuzzers are concerned with finding one input to break a server or maybe even evade censorship, but we're concerned with finding ways to manipulate existing traffic to evade censorship. And Geneva did that with the TCP IP layer, and so we're expanding Geneva to work that way for the application layer. We're going to do this in three steps. Number one, Geneva has to understand the protocol. So this is HTTP. We have our request line made up of a method, a path, and a version. And then we have arbitrarily many headers. We tell, give this information to Geneva so it knows and understands each of these fields. And we define specific manipulation primitives ways of altering some of these components of an HTTP request. We have insert, which can consider a field and insert text into it. We have replace, which, same deal, consider a field, and you can replace the text in there. And I'll show you an example of this soon. Duplicate will take a header and make two. And finally, change case will change the casing of a field. So these are really simple, but we can compose them together to form strategies. And with just these four primitives, we can be actually quite expressive with the ways we can uh, manipulate HTTP. So here's a quick example. First, duplicate the host header. Run that primitive, now we have two. Next, the replace action is gonna replace this, uh, the, first, the left child of the duplicate action in the following way. And then we send out this request. So believe it or not, this evades censorship in China so a really simple strategy like this works. Um, and 
there we are. So we have these manipulation primitives. We compose them to make strategies, and a simple strategy like that can evade. Fantastic. So how do we find these strategies? This is where we hand these primitives off to Geneva's AI. Geneva, originally written by uh, Kevin Bach and our group at the University of Maryland, which will search over the space of primitives and find successful strategies. It trains against real-world sensors. I can't go into the depth of how that works right now. Uh, I'd encourage you to read the paper to learn more about that. To note, these primitives understand syntax and not semantics. Uh, it can go, oh, hey, here's the host header. I can replace it with 64 A's, but I don't know what that means or what that's going to do. This keeps the AI blind. It shouldn't know, it shouldn't have an idea of what its changes will affect. We want it to be able to blindly explore that space. So how do we evaluate this? We train against real world sensors in China, India, and Kazakhstan. And remember, the game is evade a sensor, make it think it's invalid HP, HTTP but have the end server treated as a valid request. So we have to train against specific servers because different servers are going to accept different sorts of requests. And so these are the servers we use. And when it comes to DNS, these are the open resolvers that we use. We find a lot of results. We train against the cross products. So we, from each country, we train against each server and find a lot of strategies. Again, I don't have time to go over all of them, so I'd encourage you to look at the paper. But 77 HTTP strategies, 9 DNS strategies. I'll go over some of them with you now. This QD count field represents the number of queries in a DNS request. In this case, we only have one, google.sm, and QD count is set to one. Fantastic. If we flip this to two, China's DN uh, DNS sensor will let this through, and Cloudflare responds with a valid IP. OK. Oh, that was only Cloudflare. Let's also use. Let's also get OpenDNS in on this. If you flip the answer count to one, again, there are no actual answers in this query. Again, evades trying to censor, and both Cloudflare and OpenDNS will respond with valid IPs. So the point here is that this is a really simple strategy. This is so simple, and yet it worked against China's censor. How is that possible? The, the, what we took away from this is that this space is largely unexplored. And so hopefully this is just the beginning of a lot more work in automating the discovery of these sorts of strategies and exploring the, the application layer as an option for censorship evasion. This next takeaway is all really exciting. This is now an HTTP strategy. Um, we're gonna, the band keyword here is uporn.com. And all you have to do is change the version to be some invalid HTTP string. Sensors are going to look at that and not know what to do with it. It's going to think it's invalid HTTP. I'm not censoring. Apache 2.4.6 and 2.4.18, you're good to go. The key takeaway here is that a source of a lot of the strategies we find are things like this, totally breaking the protocol in such a way that the sensor doesn't know how to handle it, but real world servers that are in place in the wild do despite it not following the protocol. So sensors following the protocol stricter than servers is a fantastic source for censorship evasion, and that's a neat lesson. Another quick strategy is adding a bunch of slashes to the front of the path. This is going to force the packet to exceed 1,500 bytes, um, exceeding Ethernet's MTU, causing segmentation, and this evades censorship in India. The interesting thing here is that original Geneva found a strategy like this, because remember, it could manipulate the IP uh, protocol. It found this strategy. So it's neat that we can manipulate, um, we can affect network level, network and transport layer effects from the application layer. But the core takeaway here is a strategy like this is super easy to deploy. To take this to the extreme, a user could just enter a bunch of slashes in the browser. Obviously, obviously that, that's an, ex an extreme case. You don't want users to have to do that. But the point is that these strategies are so easy to deploy. I've shown you some really simple strategies. Geneva's capable of finding some really complicated, really involved stuff. And I'll share that with you now. If we add headers before and after a forbidden keyword, so in this case, host.uporn.com, this evades censorship in China. Here's the interesting thing. This ultrasurf keyword is also a forbidden keyword, and it comes before any of our modifications. This is really unintuitive and strange because 
you would assume that sensors look from starting from the beginning of the application byte stream going till the end. This suggests they don't. So this automated approach means we find things that we wouldn't have thought to try. And this can be a great jumping off point for asking further questions of these sensors and trying to understand this black box um, that is how they work. We call this class of strategies the sandwich strategy because you'll notice we have our two unmodified uh, field uh, lines uh, followed by the two lines we modify. This is a class of strategies that we call the sandwich strategy, like I said. And I mentioned it's a more complicated involved strategy. Um, to get in the details, I would be saying a lot of numbers and, and it, it would be a headache. It works in different servers according to different constraints. It works against different countries according to different constraints, according to the different characters you might insert in these two headers, according to their lengths. So again, I'd encourage you to read the paper, but the point is these are really complicated strategies that we needed automation to explore, and this Geneva tool is a great way to do that. So in conclusion, the application layer is a great space to find evasion strategies, and we've shown that application layer censorship evasion is possible, effective, and super easy to deploy. We've seen that a great source of evasion strategies comes from sensors following the protocol stricter than end servers, and that's really good news for censorship evasion. And with that, our code's there at the bottom, and I'll take your questions.